Hello, welcome back to a chapter a day. It is Wednesday, May the 8th, and we will be reading chapter 8 of Numbers. So again, we are working, um, we are reading about God's instructions to Moses for the children of Israel, specifically this time concerning um, the, or, the working of the sanctuary. How, who was supposed to work in the sanctuary and the different um, um, responsibilities for each of the tribes, um, each of the sons of the tribe of Levi. So they were the only ones who were supposed to do the work for the sanctuary. And Aaron and his sons were the only priests that were supposed to officiate in the sanctuary. So we will see what more instructions. Yesterday we read about the dedication from each of the tribes with their princes or the leaders of the tribe representing the tribes, bringing an offering to God of many different kinds of um, utensils for the sanctuary, of animal, um, animal offerings, um, of flour and oil, I mean, as much as they were blessed, each tribe brought something to God representing a thanks for God's blessings. So it's nothing less or more than we should be doing today, bringing something to say thank you to God for all that he does for us. Chapter 8, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, and say unto him, when thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. And Aaron did so. He lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick, as the Lord commanded Moses. And this work of the candlestick was of beaten gold unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof was beaten work, according unto the pattern which the Lord had showed Moses, so he made the candlestick. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the leaf, I'm sorry, yes. So again, before I go on, I always stop at verse 5 and explain God is giving these instructions for Aaron specifically for the work of the sanctuary again. And it's concerning the candlesticks. They were supposed to be of pure gold. He also told them the fashion in which they were to form the branches of the candlesticks and I don't know how many of you have ever seen um, I'm not quite sure what's the name of it but it's um, when the Jews are having their Sabbath worship they have a candlestick and it has I believe seven little I call them knobs because that's how the Bible kind of explains them like little bowls at the top of the branches of the candlestick and they usually put the, the oil in there and light light the oil and it keeps lighting so that there will always be light in the sanctuary verse 6 take the Levites from among the children of Israel and cleanse them and thus shalt thou do unto them to cleanse them sprinkle water of purifying upon them and let them shave all of their flesh and let them wash their clothes and so make themselves clean. Then let them take a young bullock with his meat offering, even fine flour mingled with oil, and another young bullock shalt thou take for a sin offering. And thou shalt bring the Levites before the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt gather the whole assembly of the children of Israel together. And thou shalt bring the Le Levites before the Lord, and the children of Israel shall put their hands upon the Levites. So now that Aaron and his sons have been consecrated, the Levites, males, 30 and older, have been counted for service. Now is the dedication of the Levites. So this is the this, this ceremony for cleansing that God is giving to Moses. Verse 11. And Aaron shall offer the Levites before the Lord for an offering of the children of Israel, that they may execute the service of the Lord. And the Levites shall lay their hands upon the heads of the bullocks, and thou shalt offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering unto the Lord, to make an atonement for the Levites. And thou shalt set the Levites before Aaron and before his sons, and offer them for an offering unto the Lord. 
Thus shalt thou separate the Levites from among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. And after that shall the Levites go in to do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt cleanse them and offer them for an offering. So it's people, but they, they are being offered to God because their sole purpose is to serve the Lord. And I know today that there are some people who devote their lives to God, to serving God. I know um, in Catholicism, the priests and the nuns set themselves apart so they do not mingle or get married or do anything like that. Now, it, this is not really scriptural because the Levites were people who got married. They were able to perform a, a normal life except that their main purpose was to office or take part in the services of the sanctuary or to take care of the sanctuary but they were not um, ostracized from society and not allowed to be married they were men they needed to be married and the women bore children so God said be fruitful and multiply but if that is someone's um, choice like Paul the Apostle he chose to remain in that capacity without becoming a family man per se or being married that is an option but if you do so you have to be totally devoted to God and not slip shoddy okay you can't say you're doing that and you separate yourself and then you're doing stuff that's really not right in God's sight so uh, continuing with verse 16 for they are wholly given unto me from among the children of Israel, instead of such as open every womb. Even instead of the firstborn of all the children of Israel have I taken them unto me. For all the firstborn of the children of Israel are mine, both man and beast. On the day that I smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt, I sanctified them for myself. And I have taken the Levites for all the firstborn of the children of Israel, and I have given the Levites as a gift to Aaron and to his sons from among the children of Israel to do the service of the children of Israel in the tabernacle of the congregation and to make an atonement for the children of Israel, that there be no plague among the children of Israel when the children of Israel come nigh unto the sanctuary. And Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel did to the Levites according unto all the Lord that the Lord commanded Moses concerning the Levites, so that the children, so did the children of Israel unto them. And it will sound a bit repetitive when I read the KJV because they don't use pronouns, <laughs> not much pronouns at all. They will repeat instead of saying them and they and it and whatever, they repeat the name of the thing or the person. Verse 21, and the Levites were purified and they were washed their clothes. They washed their clothes and Aaron offered them as an offering before the Lord and Aaron made an atonement for them to cleanse them. And after that went the Levites in to do their service in the tabernacle of the congregation before Aaron and before his sons, as the Lord had commanded Moses concerning the Levites. So did they unto them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is it that belongeth unto the Levites. From twenty and five years old and upward, they shall go in to wait upon the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. And from the age of fifty years, they shall cease waiting upon the service thereof, and shall serve no more. But shall minister with their brethren in the tabernacle of the congregation, to keep the charge and shall do no service. Thus shalt thou do unto the Levites, touching their charge. Wow. So God told Moses, once Aaron has um, dedicated um, the Levites, they were offered up to God. That means when we offer our children up to God, we're supposed to follow through with that. We gave God our children and then we don't take care of their spiritual life. We just go through the ceremony. We take them because people believe they they know they want the best for their children. But when we take our children to God, we have to make sure that they are 
they know God, they learn about God, they're supposed to stay in contact with God. And as they get older, then it is going to be on them if they stay with God or if they stray from God. But we ought to do as much as we can. When we can't do the physical, um, ensuring that they know about God by reading to them, discussing scriptures with them, taking them to church to gather and hear more about God, and training them up in the way that they should go. It's the same thing here. They are being offered to God. So we just don't take them to church that day when they are going to be offered up. And after that, we have no responsibility for their spirituality. Oh, we do. So right here, God is telling Moses that from 25 years old and upward, those young Levite men are supposed to serve in the tabernacle of God. And when they get to 50, then they are to retire, but they can still work in the tabernacle, keeping charge, etc. But for service, they need to spend 25 years of service in the tabernacle. Isn't that something? So interesting. Always, I love to read scripture. I love history, and to me, scriptures is like the best history book I can ever read. I get a lot of knowledge and ideas from when I read the scriptures, and a lot of things that we think were always the way they are, the places around the world, like Egypt and um, parts of the Middle East, these places have been left desolate for years, and then foreign tribes came in and occupied the land, so when we see certain groups of people in a place and we think they've always been there. There are, there are instances where people have always, those are the people. But there are times when that's not true. God had, had pronounced a, a, um, a judgment on Egypt. And I'm, I'm specifically saying Egypt because it was mentioned that, you know, Egypt will remain, would have remained desolate for 40 years. And after that, there was invasion. There were people coming in. We don't know who were the people of Egypt originally. And sometimes we see movies and they show us this pe these people who were Egyptians. Ah, all contrary. But <clears throat> more of a spiritual nature, God is in charge of everything. God is the best historian maybe when we get to heaven he'll tell us some things that we eh, ought to know or not <laughs> sometimes things are just not necessary for us to know but until our next reading i thank you again for viewing for listening for commenting and i pray that you are blessed listening and learning something i hope and pray and until our next reading have a blessed day remember faith comes by hearing God's word. Take care.